as we take a peek into the church world, what does one see? And what what is happening around us? When you see the titles of these books that tell you that you can live your best life now, others that you are awesome, that God is not mad at you. Look at the titles that are coming out of many mega churches. The vague prophecies within the body of Christ that don't tell you to live for Christ, but rather simply give you the smooth things that you want to hear. Today we're going to talk about that. Today we're going to talk about 1 Timothy 4.1 and much more. Seducing spirits. Familiar spirits. Seductive spirits that come to you as the truth. That come to you to get you to compromise. In 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Seducing spirits. Understand that this video is not giving glory to the power of Satan, but rather warning you of the devices of Satan. When Jesus Christ inspired the scriptures and he warned you about Satan, he wasn't giving glory to Satan. He was warning you of the devices of Satan. For at the present moment, we're lacking men and women of God that are willing to stand up for Jesus Christ. Luke 10 verse 2. Therefore he said unto them, The harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers unto his harvest. In Matthew 9, 37, Then, he, then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. Where are the laborers in our time? Where are the men and women of God in our time that are willing to stand up for the truth? That are willing to not compromise the truth of God no matter what seductive spirit arises among them. In the book of Ezekiel 2230, and I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land. That I should not destroy it, but I found none. God that searches the hearts of men was looking for one man, one person to stand up for him. But he found none. How could this be? How could such a thing happen? Because of the seducing spirits, the familiar spirits of Satan that come at you to destroy you, believer. That come at you with all sorts of wicked doctrines and convince you that they are it. But today I want to talk to you a little bit about these seducing spirits in hopes that you can understand today that Jesus Christ is calling his, his church to stand up for him in these times. He doesn't need you to stand up for him. Believe me, you. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is King of Kings. But he asks in his word. In Psalm 94, 16, he asks this question. Who will rise up for me against the evildoer? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Who? In a day and age where everything gets justified by people. We have laboratories mixing different races of animals. You have goats that now are mixed so that when they produce milk, it has spider DNAs. You have all sorts of wickedness happening. You have man 
tainting God's creation. But when you mention this to people, oh, that's a conspiracy. No, it's a fact. It's happening. This is Utah's Morning News. I'm Grant Nielsen. And I'm Amanda Dixon. Right now, downtown, it's cloudy, 60 degrees. A rollover blocking traffic on I-80. Logan County, Utah. Heartland, America. Where farming is a way of life. Now, I've come here to see something which I think is truly, truly extraordinary. This may look like a fairly typical farm. There's grain over there, there are horses and cows and sheep, and it certainly smells like a real farm. But there's one animal here which I think shouldn't really exist. These? Yep. Goats. These, these, these are our goats. So they're just regular goats? They're absolutely regular goats. Well, except they're not. They're, they're totally incredible goats. So over here we have uh, the kids that were born this year, and then the older goats are all on that side. And, and these, these are your spider goats? These are the spider goats. Oh, and they're eating my top. Hey, come on. Hey, 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 behave. Just because you're on camera. And so these right. kids have the genes for a spider in them. Yes. This is, it's insane. And where does the spider silk actually come from? I mean, where well, do you get it? Well, it was designed so it comes in the milk. They, they, they look like such normal goats, but in fact, they're totally unique and, and, and bizarre. I mean, this is bizarre. You have the church world, where now a new album is coming next week. And trust me, next week, you don't want to miss that video for the glory of God. We have Lecrae, who's bringing in Lil Wayne's producer, Drake's producer, and many others to make a Christian CD. And this is acceptable to the body of Christ in 2013. Anything that has the Christian label, hey, it's okay. Would it be okay for a church to unite with Islam? Would that be okay too? Because a lot of churches are now doing Christlam. Hey, it's a tool to reach the lost. Yeah, right. Who are you kidding? Who are you kidding? You're not kidding God. You're not kidding God. For he is not deceived by the justifications that as men and women we put up before him. But man is. Man is deceived by these seducing spirits. And these seducing spirits, they come into the church usually by people who will speak the Christian language. But not everything that glitters is gold. God tells you to test all things because someone may come to you and say the right things, use the right excuses, use philosophies of men to justify the sins in their heart. But Acts 16, 16 through 18 is a perfect example of a person who was possessed with a spirit and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain with by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried saying, these men are the servants of the most high God, which shew us the way of salvation. If you search that word divination, used here in Acts. It's a letter in the Greek. It's a word, Strong's G4436, Puthon. And when you read the meaning of this, it is believed that Luke wrote the book of Acts by most people. Others may say that we don't know the actual author, but it is believed the large majority that it was Luke. But no matter the writer who was, it was God breathed, God inspired. And that word divination in the Greek says the following. 
In Greek mythology, the name of the Pythian serpent or dragon that dwelt in the region of Pytho. You can read the rest on the screen. But amazing that he would use such a word, Python, a word similar to serpent. This lady had the spirit of the serpent, a spirit of divination. This is how Satan operates. And she spoke the Christian lingo. She said, hey, these are the servants of the most high God. Even said, hey, they're showing us the way to salvation. Satan will mimic, will sound, will do anything he can to invade a church. You see, Satan doesn't care about these mega churches. He doesn't care that people attend churches. He just doesn't want the truth to be preached to people. This is why he's attacking a lot of the churches, the smaller churches, the churches that are on fire for the Lord. He's infiltrating them. And he's bringing Jezebels. And he's bringing a lot of effeminate pastors. And he's bringing a lot of individuals within the church that will twist everything. And that will never be able to back up their teaching with the scriptures, but only with examples and psychological things. These are seducing spirits. And notice how it said the spirit of divination, the spirit of the serpent. Who was that serpent in Genesis 3, 4? And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. How does Satan work? By twisting God's instructions. By changing what God has said. By asking the questions, did God really say that? Is that not a little bit too extreme? Hey, we're in 2013. We can be in 2050. God is the same. His instructions are the same. For he changes not. We may change. Cultures may change. But he changes not. And the warnings that he gives in scriptures, they're meant for your good. They're not meant for your bad. They're meant for your good. Ye shall not surely die. Ye shall not surely die. Satan always comes to twist the word. Satan always comes to justify the works of the flesh. In Acts 16, 18. And this did she many days. For many days she was proclaiming that they were the men of God showing the way of salvation. A demonically possessed woman speaking the Christian lingo and did this she many days but Paul being grieved turned and said to the spirit I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her and he came out of her, and he came out the same hour we're talking about seductive spirits the same life repackaged the spirit of the serpent the devil himself do you not think that God can take care of us do you not think that God can protect us yes Satan is defeated there's no doubt about it I've read the scriptures he loses yet for some reason the God breathed scriptures warn you about Satan as I mentioned, was God giving Satan glory by talking about him? No. But God tells the body, 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And God tells you in 2 Corinthians 2, 11, least Satan should get an advantage for us, for we are not ignorant of his devices Matthew 10 16 behold I send you forth as sheep in the middle in the midst of wolves be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves ye shall not surely die the same lie retold there's nothing new under the sun 
nothing new under the sun. As 1 Timothy 4.11 says, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Deep words here. How can you depart from the faith if you were never in the faith? This is a warning to believers that some will leave the faith. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. One of the main ways that these doctrines of devils get into people's head, get into people's homes, is with imaginations. In 2 Corinthians 10.5, Casting down imaginations. What are temptations, family, in the Lord? They're imaginations. When a person is tempted with pornography, what is it? An imagination. He is imagining a fantasy that is going to be over within a few minutes and he's going to be laying in his bedroom empty again. He's been chewed out and spit out by the devil himself. And now he's there alone in the bedroom, still empty. Imagination. The divorce rate within the body of Jesus Christ. Skyrocket high. How does that happen? Imaginations. A husband says within himself, Man, what would it like be like to be single? A girl says to herself, Hey, what would it be like to be single? The devil can even be trickier and tell you, man, if you were single, you could do so much more for the Lord. This woman's driving you bananas. And how many women that have husbands that are not on fire for the Lord, and they start looking at other men with other families, coveting other men. If I was only married to this person, and men do the same thing too, if I was only married to that person. Imaginations. He goes to churches and he tells them, hey. And now we're speaking on a personal conviction here. I do not like to put my personal convictions upon anyone. So if you're going to keep on listening, this is a personal conviction that I'm speaking on. But he goes to congregations on Halloween. And he says, let's have an alternative for the children. But my family, since when did Jesus Christ become the alternative? Jesus is the way. He's not the other way. Since when did Jesus become an alternative? These are imaginations. Hey, let's use this tool to reach the lost. And then what they do, they justify things. Hey, do you eat a banana? The Bible doesn't say that you can't eat a banana. And they'll use different examples. Because God did not tell you how to eat or not eat a banana. But he did tell you how to worship him. God did not tell you how to drive or not drive. But God did tell you how to seek him. God did not tell you. Right? How to use a microwave or not use a microwave. But God did tell you. How to worship him in spirit and in truth. But men and women of God are seduced by these very lies. I've heard them. Oh, Tally, but the scriptures don't tell you to use a computer. Yeah, you use it. You're right. This is a personal conviction to use the computer. But that God did tell me how to worship. Ah. Seducing spirits always will change the topic. And use examples outside of scripture. Because they cannot point to the scripture. To justify what they're doing. Casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And bring it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of Christ, of Christ. What happens when these imaginations come to a pastor? What happens when these imaginations come to a believer? To a home? They come like a tsunami. They exalt themselves really, really, really high. Really, really high. But God says to take those thoughts and bring in them to the captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. When they take a prisoner, what do they do? They shackle him. They put him in captivity. They put him in a room. 
and they question him. That is what you should do with the thoughts that come into your mind. Bring him into the captivity of Jesus Christ. Don't just accept them and start testing it with the word. Can I find a biblical example for this? Okay. Is this something that Jesus would do? All right. From anxiety to depression to suicidal thoughts to lust to pornography to divorce to anger, gossip, bickering, imaginations. And God says to bring them into the captivity of Christ. Ephesians 6, 2, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. We have an adversary, but we also have victory in Jesus. God warns you about these things, not because he wants you to live in fear, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. But God tells you to watch out because the enemy will study you. The enemy will analyze you. The enemy will do anything and everything he can to get you to fall. He will throw darts in your head. They may sound like your thoughts and they're not your thoughts. As the woman in Acts 16, he will bring people that are witches in the church, giving you vague prophecies. And then when something happens, they'll claim that that was the prophecy that they prophesied. Have you not seen it on YouTube? Someone will say, there's going to be an earthquake in 2013. Well, duh, there are earthquakes all the time. Be specific. But the seducing spirits behind the vague prophecies, they're aimed at one purpose. That when the prophecy doesn't happen, they have leeway. And they'll make a prophecy vague enough that they can then claim it's theirs. And when an earthquake happened, oh, that was me. They'll boast about it. Have you seen YouTube videos about it? Boasting about a prophecy that came to pass? October 2013. I prophesied that it was going to be cold outside and I walketh outsideth and it was coldeth. Are you kidding me? How about preaching repentance to the people? If a prophet's going to stand up in these days, be specific. It's going to happen here, when, and this is how. Seducing spirits. Isaiah 30, 10, which, which, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us the right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Because people love deceit. They love the deceit of this world. And Satan is full of it. Satan is full of it. Arise and wake. Arise and wake up, people. For Jesus is coming. For Jesus is coming. Horoscopes. How many believers don't read their horoscopes? Huh? Halloween, as I said, that's a personal conviction. God does not tell you to worship or do or not or whatever Halloween. But my personal conviction, Leviticus 18, 21, And thou shalt not let any of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God, I am the Lord. In those times, they would bring their children to Molech. And in our times, Satan knows that you're not going to take your child to a big statue with a fire. But you will take him trick or treating. And you will dress him up on a day that my personal conviction lets me know you should have no part of. Because he seduced families. He seduced the church. Ye shall not surely die. And how did these seductions take place? In your cartoons. The modern babysitter for children cartoons. Right? When you go to McDonald's and you buy a Happy Meal, go buy one this week, even if you throw it out. It comes with a pumpkin, with a jack-o'-lantern, Halloween stickers, and more. When you go to the store, now they make the Ouija board pink. 
Oh, so cute, right? They make the bad good, the good bad. And Satan, all he wants is a little door, a little tiny entrance to destroy your house, to destroy your family. How many people don't participate in rituals with their culture? If you're a Mexican, you know there are cultures in Mexico that are not honoring God. Even in Puerto Rico, there are different festivals that do not honor God. Native Americans, how many of them don't participate in rituals that do not honor God? We may justify things. We may say, I want to reach the culture. But I fear that you haven't reached the culture. But the culture has sure reached you. And the evidence of that is what's happened within the church within the last 40 years. Where we've used all sorts of different things saying, hey, this is a tool to reach the lost. But it's evident that the lost has reached you, church. It's evident that it's reached us, church. Deuteronomy 12, 30 to 31. Take heed to thyself that thou be not snared by following them. Who are the them? Unbelievers, pagans, heathens. After that, they be destroyed from thee, and that thou not inquire after their gods, saying, How did these nations serve their gods? Even so will I do likewise. He's warning about them not doing so, of them not saying, I will do the same. Thou shalt not do unto the Lord thy God, for every abomination to the Lord which he hateth have they done to their God. For even their sons and their daughters, they have burnt in the fire to their gods. I pray today that you be strong. I pray today that you not be swayed. And I pray today in Jesus' mighty name that you don't let the devil take you out of the track that Jesus has put you upon. Be the Daniel of this generation. Be the Elijah of this generation. Be the Noah of this generation. The Moses of this generation. Men who had to be bold and men who had to stand upon the word of God. Because the seducing spirits aim to destroy. Aim to rip off everything that God has done for you. It may be a lonely walk, but God will send true believers among your side. Don't be discouraged. Keep on walking in the love of Jesus, most importantly, because Satan wants you to rock around bitter. Oh, we have nothing to be bitter. You know who has to be bitter? You know who has to walk around angry? Those who don't have the truth. But when you have the truth, oh, you walk around like nothing. You can have people left and right seducing you with theologies of doctrines of the devil. You walk in love. Hey, you answer with the scriptures. You have the scriptures. They have these, you know, psychological thoughts of men, philosophies of men. You walk in the scripture. What I fear is that if Ezekiel 20 to 30 happened today and God walked among the cities of this world, would he find one? If he walked inside your house, would he find one? If he walked inside your neighborhood, would he find one standing up for him? Just one, that's all. One person. In the name of Jesus Christ, I encourage you to be that person. Be that person who will rise up against the evil doers in love. Do it. And love requires truth. And truth will sting and people will say it's not love. Walk in Jesus. And never mind the rest. Heavenly Father, we come before your presence. Asking for your courage and for your strength. To those watching today that are attacked by seducing spirits. May the Lord rebuke you. In Jesus' name. This is not by the power of man, but by the power of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, who paid the price on the cross for our sins. And we ask for the blood of Jesus to help us in our life, uncover the seducing spirits, and wake us up. Wake us up in your precious name.
many individuals hearing this who are struggling with sleep paralysis, struggling with item movings in your homes, struggling with seducing spirits in your house which tell you to do the wrong thing when you know it's wrong. Father, in the name of Jesus, may the Lord rebuke these seducing familiar spirits. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Live for Jesus. Stand tall. Stand proud. Because when you're with Jesus, you have nothing to fear. Nothing. Nothing. For Satan is defeated. Nothing. Bring it all to the captivity and to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Bring it all. Amen.